So let's talk about what's going on with Republican Senator Mitt Romney. Um, you know, uh, I, I think when it comes to people like Romney, we have to be able to call things what they are and say, compared to this modern Trumpian cult that includes people like Trump, Trump's family, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, these types compared to them, Mitt Romney seems and feels so comparatively benign. At the same time, he's still a guy that I disagree with politically on a number of different issues. Mitt Romney and I have different economic views, views on taxation, views on social welfare programs, views on foreign policy. And of course, of course, but compared to the completely delusional weaponized nature of the modern American Trumpian right, he's not nearly as bad. And that doesn't mean we're glorifying Mitt Romney. It just says we're we're talking about things on a spectrum. He has at least taken like a minor moral stand against the most insane aspects of the Republican Party. He's anti Trump, et cetera. And he also mostly voted with the things that Trump wanted, right? Like roughly 80 percent of the time. It's not 95 percent of the time, but it's still 80 percent of the time. And over the weekend, Mitt Romney sort of provided some moral clarity on uh, CNN about Russia, Ukraine, saying it's very clear which side we should be on here. Let's take a listen to Mitt Romney would be done by the U.N. or by us. But uh, clearly the humanitarian uh, demand may may be such that uh, that we will look for a way to allow the mothers and children that are t currently being huddled in subway stations to be able to find refuge. Right. Uh, and look at the people of Poland, how heroic they are providing the clothing and the and the housing and the food for these refugees that are that are pouring into their country and also in Romania. Look, look, this is this is one of the, the the greatest demonstrations of good versus evil that we've seen during our lifetimes and and the demonstration of courage. I mean, look, look at Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin. Here he is in this this uh, behind this huge table in this big white room. I mean, it looks like a mausoleum where where uh, honesty and honor have gone to die and contrast that with Zelensky, with his courage, with his passion. Which, with his true leadership, th this is remarkable, and it's having an impact. And, and I hope it makes us a better people, and it makes us more committed to the principles of freedom. So this is the perfect example of differences of opinion with someone who, at least on this issue, has his head modestly on straight versus insanity like Biden stole the election. Hillary should be in prison. The vaccines are killing people, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but Romney says Biden has done some really good things, putting pressure on Russia, and he also could have done more. That's a reasonable position. I want to go back in time a little bit, Senator. Do you think it was a mistake for President Biden to rule out U.S. troops on the ground? instead of trying to use what's known as strategic ambiguity to deter Vladimir Putin from invading in the first place? Well, there really wouldn't have been an ambiguity. We don't have the kind of troop strength uh, and, and material of war in the region to be, uh, to be a serious threat uh, at, at that point. Uh, look, the, the, uh, the Biden administration has done some things very well and some things not so well. The not so well side is they continued the policy of prior administrations not to provide the defensive weapons that Ukraine needed. That was the mistake. The positive thing was that sharing our intelligence with our allies and combining uh, our efforts with our allies. Look, we used to be 40% of the world economy. Today, we're about half of that. And, and so for us to have the kind of economic clout we used to have back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, we really do need to combine with our allies. And this is it's it's crazy that like I I, I don't love Romney and I, I disagree with him on so much stuff, but he's at least willing to say Biden did some things that were fine. And here's things I would have done differently. Whereas you have so many of these Trumpian Republicans now who anything Biden does, anything Biden does is by definition bad. Now, then he got into the just absolute hammer fist drops on on people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Gozar. He was asked about them and, and he just called them morons uh, and said that. Um, they're, they're sort of like low IQ people. I mean, listen to this. This is wild. You talked several times during this interview about the world seeing the difference between good and evil. 
I want to bring that closer to home and talk about something that Congresswoman Liz Cheney tweeted uh, yesterday about yes. sitting Republican House members appearing at a white nationalist gathering. She said, quote, as Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar speak at this white supremacist, anti-Semitic, pro-Putin event, silence by Republican Party leaders is deafening and enabling. All Americans should renounce this garbage and reject the Putin wing of the GOP now. Do you agree? Absolutely. Uh, Liz Cheney was right with that statement, and she's been right for a long time. And I also saw uh, that, uh, that Ronna McDaniel came out with a statement as well, uh, uh, talking about how repugnant these white nationalists are. Look, there's no place in, in either political party uh, for this white nationalism or racism. It's simply wrong. Now, uh, unfortunately, a place has been made in Romney's party for it. Like, I guess he's saying there shouldn't be a place, but there's been a place in it for years now. Uh, it's it's uh, as as you've indicated, speaking of evil, uh, it's evil as well. And, uh, and, and you know, I, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar, I don't know them, but I'm reminded of that old line from the Butch Cassidy, and the Sundance Kid movie where where one character says morons. I've got morons on my team. And I have to think anybody that would sit down with white nationalists and speak at their conference was certainly missing a few IQ, IQ points. Wow. Wow. Uh, I mean, listen, he's right. He's right. And you can disagree, obviously, with someone's politics or beliefs but appreciate some of the things that they say or do. And it sort of tells you everything you need to know about the Republican Party, that most of Mitt Romney's utterances today sound sensible. He's still a right winger in the end, but it's such a contrast to the absurdity. I mean, remember his gaff. I've got binders full of women, which at the time was a gaff. It's almost quaint now, and I'm not dismissing the fact that it was sort of inherently kind of, you know, the concept of having binders of women. It's all you could argue it sounds misogynistic and all. I'm not denying any of that. But compared to what's going on now, even that is a gaffe starts to seem almost quaint. So I'm not saying I want to vote for Romney or anything like that, but the contrast is incredible. And he's right. They have morons in their wings. And unfortunately, Romney is the exception at this point in time. Unfortunately, Marjorie Taylor Greene seems to be more the way that the party is going. And we're going to talk about that next.